Welcome to Kids Church Online. Here are today's announcements. Join us on Sunday for Kids Church at 10. Kids Club and Free Teams will be every Friday from 6 to 8. October 31 Fall, Fe Fall Fun Fest at 6.30 to 8.30. For more information, please feel free to contact Caitlin at and Crystal at family at rpcchurch.ca. Be prepared for the test you may face in life. Today's memory verse is, I told you think these things so that you could have peace in me. In this world you will have trouble, but be brave. I have defeated the world. John 16, 33. Today's main points are, don't be afraid to share your trials. Use trials to bring scripture to your life. Focus on God to help you go through trial. Everyone goes through different trials in life. There are many people in the Bible that went through trials in life. Today we would look at the story of Daniel and the trial he went through and how he overcame it. Story, Daniel. So part of God's story is about a guy named Daniel, and it goes like this. Daniel was a Jew, which means he was part of God's special family. But when he was a young man, a king called Nebuchadnezzar, let's call him Nezer, came in from the city of Babylon and took over. He chose the smartest, strongest, most handsome Jewish men to leave their home and come work for him in his palace. One of those young men was Daniel. Even though most people in Babylon didn't follow God, Daniel and his friends did. So they had to figure out how to obey God and serve the king. For starters, they had to go through a training program where they were fed royal food. The problem was, King Nezer had also offered that food to idols or false gods. And since they followed God, they wanted nothing to do with idols. So Daniel had an idea. He asked the chief of the king's staff if he and his friends could eat vegetables and water for 10 days instead. If they got too weak or skinny, they'd eat something else. Well, guess what? God made them even stronger than the men who ate royal food. God gave Daniel extra understanding, too. In fact, a few years later, the king had a nightmare. Nobody knew what it meant. Daniel told King Nezer that he would ask God to show him. God did. After that, King Nezer adored Daniel. He even said God was pretty great, which was a big deal, because the king didn't even think about God before that. But soon, he made it hard for Daniel to follow God again. That's because the king built a huge gold statue of himself, 90 feet tall. Anybody who didn't bow down to it would be thrown into a furnace. This time, Daniel's friends were the ones in trouble. Their names were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They told the king, the God whom we serve is able to save us. But even if he doesn't, we will never worship the gold statue you've set up. So they got sent into the fire. Well, pretty soon the king looked into the furnace and noticed that there were four men, and they were walking around. An angel of the Lord was protecting Daniel's friends. They got out alive and didn't even smell like smoke. God didn't stop them from getting punished, but he did go through it with them. The king had never seen a god who would rescue like that. Afterwards, King Nezer didn't mind if Daniel and his friends worshipped God, but the king still worshipped idols too. So God sent him another dream and Daniel told him what it meant. King Nezer would live in a field and eat grass like a cow for seven years. In other words, he'd go crazy until he realized that God is the only one we should worship. Kids, God doesn't want everybody to worship whoever they want. He wants everybody to worship him. Anyway, Daniel kept working for other kings of Babylon, even after King Nezer. God continued to help him understand dreams and visions. And even though he had to give a lot of bad news, Daniel did excellent work, and he was really well-liked by the kings. In fact, one king named Darius liked Daniel so much that others got jealous. They tried to get Daniel in trouble. But they knew the only way to do that was to make a law against God. They suggested that everybody pray only to King Darius. That made the king feel important, so he made it a law. Anybody who disobeyed would spend the night in a den of lions. Daniel kept right on praying, though, and when King Darius found out, he was sad. He didn't want to punish Daniel, but now it was the law. He said, may your God whom you serve faithfully rescue you. And guess what? God did! He sent an angel to shut the lions' mouths. 
Daniel served four important kings, and he followed God. But whenever it came down to obeying God or the king, Daniel chose God every time, no matter what. And even though Daniel had to do some really hard things, God was always with him. And that's the story of Daniel. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Daniel was taken to Babylon. He asked for vegetables. God made him strong. God gave Daniel understanding. Daniel's friends obeyed God instead of the king. They got punished. God rescued them. Daniel understood more dreams. He was the king's favorite. Others got jealous. Daniel obeyed God instead of the king. He got punished. God rescued him. Daniel served God no matter what. And that's a part of God's story. Grab your parents and answer these questions with us. How can we overcome trials? What are some trials we go through in life? Why does God allow us to go through these trials? Family challenge. Read the story of Daniel in the lion's den with your kids and talk about challenges that you are going through. Sometimes if it is nice for kids to know that even adults do go through tough times. Thanks for joining us, guys. Well, why don't we close off in prayer? Dear God, I thank you for this awesome day and this awesome week and that we get to spend time learning about you and learning about how you love us and how you always take care of us. I pray that you would be with every single boy and girl and mom and dad and everyone watching this and that you'd help them have an awesome week and that you would be with them for whatever they're going through. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you guys next week. Thanks for joining us. See you next week.